I'm Clint. We're going to be looking at how to get a classic cell animation look with your images in Photoshop on this episode of Swatches. This video was originally created for my patrons on patreon.com slash swatches as one of their bonus videos. It wasn't the main content, but I thought I'd share it with you guys here on YouTube. I haven't uploaded anything in a while. So, on to the main content. This is an image I created for my servo tokens. I create my own images and put them on cards and sell them as tokens at magic events, and I needed a new one to represent my servo token. Of course, it's my own creation, so I could choose any image that I wanted. The new Ghost in the Shell movie, the live action is about to come out. And I was remembering the beginning sequence of the animated version of the creation of the Major's artificial body. And I thought, can I get that classic sort of cell animation airbrushed look in Photoshop? And that's what this was about. It's just an experiment in trying to capture that look and that feeling. This is where it started. I had created a you know, rough pen and ink drawing on the back of a card in an event, and that served as the concept that I worked from. Obviously, I couldn't use those lines. That's really rough. So the first thing I did was go into Photoshop and start working on lines. I did pull up some reference in order to get a better anatomical size for the head and the right angle. If you've ever tried to get nice, clean lines in Photoshop, you'll know that it doesn't work very well. I am trying to get this as smooth as I can, but you see that there's just all these little variances in it. That picks up the uh, imperfections on the top of your Wacom pad and, you know, the way your muscles pull one way or the other. The Photoshop won't smooth your brush strokes out. It currently does not have that feature. I think it needs to be included. But there are, fortunately, a couple of plugins and additional third-party programs that you can use in order to help you out with that. The one that I ended up using is called Hedge Stylus. And it was about 20 bucks, well worth the money. I'm sure I'll probably use it in the future. And another option is Lazy Nazumi. I'm not sponsored by either one of them or anything, but I think you should be aware that there are options out there. Lazy Nazumi is probably the bigger program. However, at the time of this recording, it is not available for Macs, which is why I went with Head Stylus. It is a little icon that comes up on the top of my bar over here. I can simply turn it on, tweak the settings. And now when I make a brush stroke, it smooths it out. I can get cleaner curves without as many little variances in it. So that is how I went about getting the cleaner lines in this. And I started off with black lines, but then I end up lighting them up to a sort of grayish brown. You'll see that in a second. The next step was lightening the lines and putting in the base tones. I did use mass in order to get very clean lines and keep me from painting outside of the lines. I put all my base tones in one layer, all of my shadows on another layer. We'll take a look at the painting file itself and see how I set those up. But we're going to look at this process first. The next thing up is adding some variances to the shadows and adding more lighting and adding the colors. This was just the basic two colors here. Now I add colors to the little brass bits and the wires and adding variances in the shadows. So the shadow goes from light to dark in different places. There's a bit of different color in the shadows depending on which area is getting more or less light. Another thing to note in order to capture that classic cell animation look is adding visual noise. And the brush settings, if you pull them over here, then you have the option right here for noise. You can go to window and turn on brush and it'll give you this window. And then you want to click this on and off. Now let me grab my airbrush and show you what that looks like. This is it with a noise. You can see the noise all the way through it. If I turn that off, it gives it to me perfectly clean with no noise. You could do it that way, but it looks too clean. So I incorporated that into my brush to help get me that look. The next thing, I worked on the brain casing, which is where I start working on not adding just shadows and mid shadows, but adding a little highlights as well in order to get a bit more three dimensionality to it. 
And finally, I add some of the lighting effects like the blue glow, changing up shadow tones a bit more, lightening them, adding a bit more highlights to a couple of little metal pieces, and then I would call it finished. But let's switch over and look at the PSD file and see how I set those up. This is the PSD file that I painted it in. So we'll take a look at how I set up the layers in order to get some of the looks that I did. Uh, first, we'll just turn off the crop layer. That's there just to remind me what is getting cut off in the token printing process. And let's turn off these top ones. The head and the brain are the two main layers that have other layers added into them. This has a mask on it, so I can't paint outside of that layer. I could turn on the uh, lock there. The mask, so I can't paint out of it. And then it has two layers in the clipping mask over it. One is a screen layer for the little highlights that you see, particularly on the cables. And one is the multiply. Now, if I wanted to paint just inside of the shadows, like I did multiple times throughout this, then all I'd have to do is click on this. It would lock that, which would mean I can't paint on anything that is transparent or has not been painted on. Then I can limit my brush strokes to only the shadowed areas. And that's how I went about adding the gradations of certain spots of the shadows being lighter or darker than the other one. The same thing with the brain. The brain is locked, so I cannot paint outside of the brain shape. And inside of it is a layer set to multiply what allows me to create the shadows. Over that, we have the lines and a layer in the clipping mask of the lines, which is set to lighten, where I can control what color the lines are set to. Like I said, these are not black lines. These are sort of a brown gray. After getting these, then the next thing I want to do is I copied all of this. I just did an edit, copy merged, and pasted it. And that's where I have this. Now that looks pretty good. It has the clean animation lines. It has the lighting the same way you would have in animation. It has the gradations and the shadows, but it doesn't quite match up with that classic look. One of the things you have to do in order to get that is rough it up. It is too clean and too modern. What you need to do is go up to filter and run a Gaussian blur. Go to blur, Gaussian blur, set it for about half a pixel, and you can see that it makes a slight change to this. Otherwise, it's too clean. We want to fuzz it up. I then want to add my shadow on the edges there. I want to add my glow and I want to add film grain. The combination of the slight blur and the film grain really helps to sell this as a classic cell animation steel. Now the glow is set to lighten at 50%. I played around a while trying to figure out which one would have the right look that they used in the show and that's the one I came up with. I did have my brush set to the noise right there in order to get some of that roughness that you see in this area. And because it is only set to 50%, I can't blow everything out. It mainly affects the darkest areas. And of course, the film grain, I can turn that on and off and you can see the difference that makes. Naturally, the original cell animation was recorded on film, and it has a certain graininess. Digital created images can be completely clean because they don't use any film. Anyway, if you decide to do your own cell animation sort of image, then hopefully some of those tips would help. Remember that you want to distress it a little bit, and you can use the plugins such as Lazy Nozumi or Hedge Stylus in order to get you your nice clean lines. And I hope you enjoyed this video as a whole. As always, appreciate you watching and keep drawing.